I am Charles Hanscat. Uh, we're talking about constructability of zero lot line foundations with shotcrete. And I like, always like to tell everybody, you know, we're hearing all this about 3D printing now. You know what? Shotcrete's been around for over 100 years. We're kind of the original 3D printing. And we're going to show you some of the creative things we can do. Uh, I have a talk later about architectural, uh, but here in the foundation world. I am executive director, technical director of the American Shotcrete Association. We're a trade association and our, our entire mission is to get shotcrete accepted as equal uh, to cast in place concrete. That's the, the standard in the industry. That's what's been done for hundreds of years, tens uh, of years at least. And we are making great progress in that through education, reaching out in seminars like this. Uh, this is a video. I, some of you may not have seen shotcrete going in place. Uh, Stadia has some really great pictures of shotcrete placement. They were static. But here, what are we doing? This is a mock-up panel, much less congested than what Stadia showed in that mass concrete. But we're taking a wet concrete, it's pre-mixed. We're pumping it through a hose and adding air at the nozzle to be able to accelerate the shotcrete material. So we're going from a low slump to a zero slump. We're able to stack it. Stadia showed you the beehive. Uh, but you can see one of the advantages of shotcrete, when you know what you're looking for, you can see that you're getting full consolidation of the concrete and encasement of the reinforcing steel. Now you'll notice it's rough surface, uh, it's fresh concrete. Uh, that's an advantage and a disadvantage. The disadvantage is uh, we have to finish it or we can leave a gun finish like this. Uh, most work is actually finished with what you saw from Stadia's presentation was uh, they finished for the inside of the stations. And I'll go into more of that when I get into architectural, but we're able to stack it. Uh, there was a question about how high can you build the walls? We can build the walls and in individual bench lifts. Those bench lifts typically are four to six feet high. If we go too much higher, we get so much weight of concrete, it tends to slough off. But here you can see the wet concrete going in place and the nozzleman's able to see everything. If you have a knowledgeable inspector, Stasia talked about the fact that their project, they were training inspectors. We now have ACI certification for shotcrete inspectors. And I'll talk about that later. So what is shotcrete? It's concrete placed by high velocity pneumatic projection. And people say, well, what's high velocity? 60 to 80 miles per hour. So imagine you're driving down the freeway, you hit a concrete column. That's what we're doing. With every square foot of shotcrete, we're basically driving that concrete in place, giving it zero slump, and being able to consolidate it around reinforcing steel, even congested reinforcing like you saw in the previous presentation. And shotcrete is not a product. It is basically a placement method for concrete. And ACI 318 now recognizes that shotcrete is a placement method for structural concrete. This presentation is about foundations and how shotcrete's been used in uh, many of our zero lot lines where we're coming in and high rise buildings, uh, building a new building adjacent to, adjacent to existing buildings. Here you can see Seekin piles where they've actually, uh, here in the left uh, hand picture, you can see they've driven or cast these, these could be cast pre uh, cast concrete piles, they could be precast, uh, coming in with shotcrete to be able to basically create a smooth finish. These are then walls that might be a, a parking garage under the building, it might be uh, other storage areas, uh, mechanical that would be in the lower levels of a high rise building. Typically shotcrete's not gonna be used to do columns and uh, floor slabs for a big high rise, that's gonna be cast work. But when you get to the foundations where you have continuous walls um, that you need to be liquid tight against groundwater, uh, that's where shotcrete really comes in with a natural advantage. Um, and we can provide almost any finish on these walls. Here you can see on the lower right, uh, these are curing blankets and we're adding basically water curing to cure that concrete in place. Here you can see some more secant piles uh, that were 
<clears throat> in the wall section, there are the piles, and then we've come in basically with shotcrete to fill in the gaps to give us a nice, consistent, uniform surface. If need be, we can put reinforcing in some of these to provide more structural stability of that shotcrete skin that's covering the secant piles. Uh, we can also replace lagging. Um, not too many jobs like this, but you can see where they've come in with a, a rough shotcrete. This is not finished. This is going to probably have another coat on it if it's going to be shotcreted, or these could just be uh, walls that are built uh, out from where you see the lagging. But uh, once again, we're basically placing structural concrete in between the pile supports here. Smoothening, uh, here you can see the uh, piles that were driven that you're not going to have that on the inside of your basement. You want to have some kind of finish, uh, finished concrete surface. And you can see on the right, uh, this picture here, the, the, you can see the piles driven above and how they've brought in the shotcrete to be able to provide a nice, relatively smooth surface uh, for the basement levels. Slurry walls, the same way you come in and do a slurry, slurry wall, that's not necessarily uniform thickness or, or profile, right? So if you have a slurry wall, wall, you can come in with shotcrete. Once it's excavated, place shotcrete here. You give you an idea of perspective. This is a man lift. So these guys up here, they're six feet high. Uh, we're talking, you know, 30 feet of wall that's being architecturally and structurally stiffened with shotcrete uh, for the foundation of the uh, structure. The other thing to point out here is, this is a curved wall. Uh, that's easy perhaps to do with a slurry wall. If you had a cast wall, trying to cast concrete against a curved wall, very expensive to get a curved formwork in there. With shotcrete, we're, we're shooting against the slurry wall. So it is very cost effective, can be very quick. Uh, formwork on some construction jobs can be 35, 40% of the job. If we eliminate a majority of that formwork, we're saving time and money on the job. This is where we see a lot of uh, zero, it could be consider, considered zero lot line, but uh, railroads where we have a railroad track coming in, railroad wants to put a second track. Now, if we were building a concrete uh, cast in place retaining wall, you'd have to excavate this entire slope uh, and build your forms, the front and the back of the forms. You'd have to have enough room to get behind the back form. With shotcrete, we can use soil nails to basically pin a structural shotcrete skin to the soil to hold that wall in place or the soil in place. And here you can see they've shot the top. They're gonna to work their way down. They've excavated this next lift. They've shot uh, back in the lower left and they'll work their way across. They'll excavate the next. So it's a very time and cost effective way to build a retaining wall that will retain this, the soil adjacent to this now open, more open excavation. On the right, uh, this is a basement foundation that also is using soil nails. You can see some soil nails uh, spaced along here. Then the reinforcing, basically one is, once again, we're placing a structural concrete skin that's being held into the soil by soil nails. Here's some, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this is a staple center in Los Angeles. Uh, you can see where they were using so soldier pile and lagging. Uh, we can shoot right against that. We're basically embedding that and building a structural wall in place using the soldier pile and lagging as our formwork. Uh, down in the lower left picture, uh, this is kind of interesting because if you are in construction, you might recognize uh, this piece of white truss. That's the beginning of a tower crane. But we've been able to build the entire foundation walls and the floor is cast, but the walls are shotcreted without having a big crane in place. Shotcrete, because we use hoses just to get our material in place, we don't need a, a crane to move forms. We can be very efficient in getting 
these basement foundations started getting the project out of the ground. So here you can see a little bit more of a detail. The, uh, you can see the steel pile with the lagging, reinforcing. But once again, we're just we're building a structural wall, kind of embedding those soldier piles in place. And, and we can give that finish anything you want. This is actually grooved, like you might see when you're using a form liner. Uh, we can, if, if you wanted, you could carve it to look like rock. Uh, we can give it a, a, a gun finish that's a little bit rough. Uh, or we can do as much as a smooth steel trial finish. One of the advantages of shotcrete is, you know, when you're casting in forms, you get bug holes, you strip, uh, you get fins between the forms. With shotcrete, because we're surface, we have that surface to finish, it's a nice continuous finish that can be achieved with shotcrete. Here you can see another shot. Uh, here's the soldier piles with wood lagging. Uh, once again, we, we can start building those foundation walls. We don't need a lot of equipment on site. Uh, lower left picture, you can see where we've actually covered the shotcrete for curing so that we're going to uh, hopefully reduce the shrinkage cracking, uh, drying shrinkage or plastic shrink early age plastic shrinkage cracks. Uh, we can incorporate and do pilasters for areas that need uh, more structural um, stiffness in that wall. So it's become a very popular method for building the foundation walls. Here you can see another. Um, you can see the openings here. This is where we ac they actually had bracing back to the, you can see the pile structures here that we, they had bracing back uh, into the floor. Uh, we shot around that and then we can, once that's removed, we can shoot these openings once again with shotcrete. And I put this in here, this, I guess it's not necessarily zero lot line, but we are very um, progressive in looking at building retrofits. And you say, you know, you may have an existing building, you have to have more foundation. Uh, or it's a brick building and it needs to be strengthened. We can take that existing building and retrofit it by building a, a structural concrete wall in place. Um, we basically put up the form. If it's a brick, we may actually tie back to the brick so that brick wall is, stays intact, but allows us to build uh, the, the building uh, strengthening so that we have a better uh, resistance to seismic or wind that may be required because you're repurposing a building. So it's taking an existing building, making it stronger for the future. In the upper right, you can see a column probably for a seismic retrofit. Shear walls um, in California in the, the uh, seismic areas and wind loads, often shear walls as loading conditions change from building code uh, from year to year, we see that often we have to come in and add uh, additional shear wall. We can do that with shotcrete. And what we're showing here, this is kind of interesting because it's actually shear walls in the middle of this, this uh, floor section. Uh, this is actually a stay form, this uh, shot that you see in the lower left. Uh, this will be shot from both directions and will basically be incorporating this open kind of uh, kind of tight mesh material in the structural wall. So once again, we're getting away with really no form work that you have to erect and have form ties and have to strip. We're able to get that out uh, of the way and, and not have to do it with a stay form like this. Uh, another example of finished shear wall, but you can see the surface very, uh, over the last 10, 20 years, we've really advanced our finishing techniques. Stadia talked about using hemp fibers and how that enhanced uh, finishing. It's something that we're very, very attuned of because we're getting more and more shotcrete that's exposed to view that needs to have some more finish on it. Uh, here's another building retrofit. You can see, actually, this is a pretty congested uh, structural wall. We can see the reinforcing, the pilasters, uh, some small bracing to hold the reinforcing up. And we're gonna be able to shoot that, build that wall in place 
in on this existing floor level. This is actually seismic retrofit of columns uh, came in. This is an existing column. You can see the additional steel along with the tapered top. Um, all these columns that you see in the middle picture are shot created in place. Uh, retaining walls, once again, it looks very similar. We're basically able to come in. Uh, maybe it is where we have a one-sided form, as Stadia showed in the mock-up panels. It's not unusual to have a one-sided form uh, where you have a freestanding wall. But that form only needs to define the surface. It doesn't have a lot of structure to it. There's no form ties. It's not holding pressure of liquid concrete. Here you can see an example of a longer run of retaining walls. We can build these walls with contraction, expansion joints. But once again, we've really saved, and, and this one you can see it was actually against the soil, uh, no formwork. So when you say formwork, you save a lot of time and effort on the project. Tie back walls, um, we misspelled permanent here, but <laughs> temporary versus term permanent. Uh, shock create a, a lot of times was considered, hey, this is a temporary way to stabilize a slope or a wall section. We're seeing more and more use uh, for retaining walls as well as uh, underground projects where we used to have temporary linings with shotcrete. Now the temporary lining is becoming the final lining and shotcrete is providing the final surface. And one of the advantages we have is that we can sequence this work. You can see this is a very deep foundation. These are all roughly six, six and a half foot lifts as we're going up the wall. But we're able to build this incrementally. We don't have to build the entire form, the full height on both sides. And it makes for sequencing, getting in and building the walls uh, much more flexible and it allows often other trades to be working in another section of the project while we're working adjacent or, or close by. So why, why consider shotcrete rather than cast in place? We're, we're, we're eliminating usually forms when we're talking about a foundation. Um, we don't need a lot of extra bracing. There's no need to strip the form, to rub, uh, get rid of the bug holes. All that saves time. Construction, time is money in the job. Uh, we use less equipment. As long as we can get the hose into the area where we're placing concrete, uh, we can get good quality shotcrete. Uh, we don't have to have a crane. We don't have to have generators. Uh, typically, the pump can be several, it can be several hundred feet away. In fact, in New York City, there's times that they've pumped a thousand feet uh, using special concrete mixes, uh, be able to pump that far using steel pipe along with hose at the end. But our shotcrete contractors can be very creative in how they can do the placement. Once again, recognizing they need to get that high velocity uh, so there'd be adequate size air compressor as well as the pumping of the wet concrete. Because we're smaller, we don't have the form work. Uh, there's more space for the concurrent operations. That means less man hours. And we can do creative shapes. So if there's something that's curved, uh, easy for us to do. I was a carpenter back in the 70s. And if somebody came to me and said, hey, I need you to, to you know, build a, a curved form, I would have said, man, that's going to take me five or six times longer than just taking my standard four by eight sheet of plywood and putting studs on the side. So form in place, you have basically very heavy walls that you're building that are carrying this liquid concrete pressure. We, when we're shooting shotcrete, we have pressure right, right where we're shooting, but it doesn't take along the entire wall. We're able to distribute that load and once again, get away with a form if we are using a form that's very light, just defining the back surface. And here we are with shotcrete. Uh, once again, you can see we can scaffold, we can come in. If some projects, they'll use a man lift. Uh, as long as we get access to that face uh, with a, a properly trained and certified nozzleman, you can get good quality placement 
as Stadia talked about on her project, it does make a difference on the contractor, uh, the experience of the contractor. So one of the things we do recommend is ACI Nozzleman certification because the Nozzleman is the, he's the final QC on the job of the placement of that concrete. They're the ones that see it all going in place. So ACI does have a certification program, requires 500 hours on the nozzle. There's a written exam. There's a performance exam where they shoot the core panel and then grade them on the ability in case reinforcing without voids. And as ASA the association, we believe that it's not just the nozzleman that's important on the job. You also need to have a, a contractor that is experienced in shotcrete. It takes the the owner has to buy the right pump, he has to maintain the pump, uh, has to have the right size air compressor. Project manager has to get the right mix design. You saw Stadia talk about the mix design things they went through to get that seventy percent slag. Um, testing, all these things, all this works together. It's a shotcrete team from the owner through the field crew. And so at ASA, we do have a contractor qualification program. Uh, we've rolled out, it's about a year and a half old. So that's something to look for uh, if you have a project on uh, structural shotcrete, you probably would then ask to have an advanced category qualified contractor. There also is a shotcrete inspector program. Uh, it's a written exam, but we also, ASA offers education. So that's all I have from these slides. I apologize if a little rough because I just got the talk put together for this uh, since I'm filling in. I see some questions <coughs> I can answer. Uh, Aman, is it okay if I do Oh yeah, the please do. Are we okay yeah. on time? Oh yeah, uh, definitely right. answer questions, please. <laughs> So does shotcrete offer air entrainment properties to resist freezing and thawing exposures? Do you add air entrainment admixtures? And I was going to point out in Stadia, as you might have mentioned, that the concrete air content as delivered was in the eight, as I recall, eight to nine percent air content. But you saw in place, we were talking 3.9, 4. What happens is we get high velocity impact. We drive some of that air content out. So we typically get about half the air in place shotcrete to concrete than what you get when it's coming out of the truck. Now you still, if you think about it, air content is measured two ways, or not two ways, but one way, an air pot, right? Uh, you can do hardened air void analysis, but that air pot mo measures total air and entrained air. Entrained air is what we're looking for. Those little small bubbles, those are the ones that are giving us free thaw durability. Those are retained. Usually what we're knocking out by impact is the bigger entrapped air bubbles. So we also wet mix concrete. We can use air and training admixtures, the standard that you would have, uh, though we would tend to be a higher level. So if you wanted 3% or 4%, you're gonna wanna get to six, seven, eight percent maybe 9% air as delivered. There's another question about plastic shrinkage cracking. Uh, we have an exposed surface. Those of you who do a cast floor, that top of the floor is exposed to the environment. If it's hot, dry, windy conditions, you can get plastic shrinkage cracks. We can get that in our walls or roofs when we're shooting above. Good shotcrete contractors will be prepared for that. If it's going to be a dry day, windy day, hot day, hopefully that they'll be uh, on site a, a pressure washer with a fogging nozzle or just misters that can actually keep the surface high humidity so we can keep that plastic shrinkage cracks down. Shockery does tend to have more paste than what you would typically see in a cast in place mix. Um, on the other hand, we tend to have lower water cement ratios, higher strengths, so that kind of negates the, the difference that we might get in drying shrinkage. But plastic shrinkage crack is early age. A uh, contractor with right procedures should be able to uh, minimize that. I can't say that it's going to be 100%, but it, it should minimize it. Any other questions? Uh, what I've listed here, shotcrete.org is our ASA website. We have a buyer's guide, but we also have an archive search through 20 years of our magazine. Uh, we print a magazine four times a year. 
and there are hundreds of articles. If you have some question about Shockcrete, go to the website, search through the archive. More than likely, you'll find an article that might be right on to answer your question. Uh, I also answer technical inquiries all the time.